Hi everyone, this is Frank DeMora with the End Times Research Ministry. I'm going to connect some more news for May the 3rd of 2013. And if you just found my YouTube channel, I'd like to invite you to go over to my website, which you'll see at the top, the End Times Research Ministry. And when you're there, you'll be able to click to my book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. The book is free. The link is there at my site so that you would be able to read it right now, today, immediately if you wanted to, and it's free. So let me get right into the news, and let me, before I can do that, I need to give you the warning by God. What he said was going to take place just before he came back. Now, as you can see from the scriptures that I have on here, there's three different places in the Bible. There's one in a in Hosea, as you see right here, and then there's also one in Ezekiel and in Zephaniah. Now, every one of these prophecies, they tell us generally the same thing, that in the last days, you will see that the birds, the fish, and the animals will be dying. You'll see it here, the fish of the sea that are dying. You'll see the beast of the field and the birds, and you'll see like I said, the same thing, fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the beasts of the field, and also in Zephaniah. He's going to sweep away the birds of the air, and the fish in the sea, and, uh, and the animals, as you see here. So, what I've been showing you, and what is listed in my book, I've been following what's been going on with the fish, the birds, and the animals dying at the latter part of 2009, and there's a host of information. And it's all, almost happening daily now that we're starting to see this kind of information. Back in 2009, it wasn't that prevalent. But now, and I believe it's part and parcel because of what the Lord showed us in Mark 13, 8, where he said in the last days we would see these birth pangs. And there's no doubt about it in my mind since 2009 it's been greatly increased, at least these reports about the birds, the fish, and the animals dying. So I'm going to go over now and show you two new, uh, or the latest news that came out with some animals and fish that are dying. And adding this information again into my book, keeping it up to date for you. So let's go over to the first one. All right, so this news comes to you. You see that it was on May the 2nd. That was yesterday's news, dead carp turn up in the Pipe Stream Reservoir. So it says, dead carp along the shores of the Pipe Stream Reservoir may confirm officials fear that the lake suffered a winter kill. It says, North Dakota Game and Fish Department officials have speculated in early April that the lack of oxygen in the water could cause a winter kill in the lake. Now, when you go into my book, you're going to see article after article where we're seeing that oxygen in the water, oxygen in the lakes, oxygen in the uh, reservoirs, oxygen in the seas, in the oceans, there's ma becoming major problems and fish in some cases by the millions are dying. And so the articles that we're seeing here is just a microcosm just today of what's been going on, and it's increasing. So let me go on to the next one now. All right, so we're at the news now, and you'll see down here. Now, I know that it's hard to see, but this is May the 2nd, 2013. And so it says this, the big freeze livestock death toll hits 100,000. Like I said, the reports are that we're seeing uh, in many cases, thousands and hundreds of thousands, either the fish, the birds, or the animals. It says the death toll for stock killed during the freezing winter and early spring weather has hit 100,000 and still rising. The National Fallen Stock Company, AFSCO, has said. So there's other information in there, but that should suffice the headline alone, 100,000. And as I said, if you want more information, 
All you would have to do is go into my book and see it from 2009 all the way to uh, 2013, May of 2013. So let's move on to the next prophecy. And before we get to the next prophecy, just if you want to, take a note of the scripture, write them down, put them somewhere, and as you're listening to the news or you're searching the web, I don't care if you're a Christian or a non-Christian, just put this in the back of your mind because you're going to see article after article pop up more than you've ever seen before. So take if you need to stop the video to write down the scriptures, go ahead and do that because you're going to see more news uh, being reported. So let's move on. Now, another prophecy that we know Paul gave to us specifically about the last days. And why do I say specifically about the last days? Well, in order for Israel to be able to call for peace and safety, Israel would have to have been reborn again as a nation. Because if they did not come back as a nation again, how in the world could they be calling for peace and safety in the last days? Well, we know that that's exactly what happened. On May 14, 1948, Israel was born again as a nation. And ever since 1948, as a matter of fact, on May 15, 1948, midnight, they were attacked right after becoming a nation again. And Israel has had conflict after conflict, war after war, even up to now. And you saw that if you were watching the news from April or May when these rockets from the Gaza started to be sent over again into Israel. And of course, Israel has responded to those attacks. So we know that the time frame is set up. And we know Israel's born and they're calling for peace and safety. Now the peace process has been actually stalled for almost two years now. And there's been a lot of moves to try to get this peace process motivated or going again. And there's making moves. So this is the time where you should really pay attention because it says when they, look at this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the dark. Notice the darkness. The Christians are not going to be in the darkness because they are going to know. They've been in the word. They're abiding in the Lord, and nothing is going to come to a surprise. So again, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So we know what the Lord wants us to look for. And we know that when this happens, we know that this is the generation who's been picked, chosen. The blessed generation who's going to see the physical return of the Messiah, Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in relation to the call for peace and safety, because there's a lot of talk about dividing up Israel, I need to point out a few things to you so that you'll have a good understanding what's happening, how you can connect the dots between what God has shown us and what's actually happening in the world. Now, in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, it says this, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. There's no question who God is talking about. The nation of Israel, the Jews, whom they have scattered among the nations and departed my land. So there's a curse against anyone who tries to come against the chosen nation of Israel. Anyone who tries to divide up Israel, separate their land, is going to end up being destroyed. This is what the Lord warned us. And there are many other places, for example, in Zechariah chapter 12, we see that anyone who comes against or burdens themselves against uh, Jerusalem are going to be cut into pieces. So you see this Vatican flag flying behind the verse, and there's a reason for it, and you, I'll show you that reason when we get in and make a connection. 
Now, making this connection between the Vatican, the Pope, the peace process, it comes into focus when you understand who Jesus is talking about in the last days, who is going to play major roles, Antichrist, false prophet, this one world religion, false religion that's going to be developed, we know from Revelation 17, chapter 17, that it's going to be in the city with the seven hills. So in the context of Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 and 4, I want to center on the colors and some of the qualities that the Lord showed us that we're going to be uh, seeing in this false church, this woman, as the Lord refers to. So look at this. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in, get this now, purple and scarlet. Embed this into your mind. Purple and scarlet color. And decked with, guess what, gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So we know where this false church will be established. It's We are told in Scripture that there was going to be the city of the seven hills. And we know uh, in verse 18 of Revelation chapter 17, which I don't have here, that it shows us that it's a great city. So we know that the city with the seven hills is Rome. There's no question about that. So when the Lord is pointing to colors, purple and scarlet and gold, he's showing you the things, the nature of this false church that will be riding this beast, this scarlet colored beast, as it says in Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. So let's now go into the news so I can connect the dots for you. All right, so we're going to center on the peace talks first so that you can see the time frame that the Lord had warned us about is here. Israel's established and they're calling for peace and safety. Look at this. Benjamin Netanyahu says that any Israeli-Palestinian peace plan would be subject to a national referendum. Now, this is the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It was, he's been installed... Uh, I believe, as a man who was going to protect the nation of Israel. And he is a staunch, uh, staunch leader who does not allow uh, unjust attacks to go unpunished. So when you s see that the, uh, the Palestinians from the Gaza Strip are firing those rockets over, uh, all it's going to do is put a, a damper, and it has put a damper, on the continued peace talks. As I said, they were already stalled. But they're trying to get them established again, trying to get them uh, started again. So, it says, Israel's chief peace negotiator said Thursday, it's good news that the Arab peace incentive is negotiable and that the Arab nations are supporting peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians at a difficult time in the region. So we know, and John Kerry's been over there recently trying to get these uh, the Middle East, the, the Arabs in Israel, to sit down to start this. There's been some problems uh, associated with starting them up again. Obviously, the rockets have been a problem. But here's the bottom line. I wanted to show you that they are calling for peace and safety. You'll see the Prime Minister, his name keeps coming up here, the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said Thursday that any peace deal that we just read to you. So keep that in mind. Now, let me go into my next article for you. And you'll see, which is, to me, Important because you see the Pope accepts the invite to Israel urges peace talks. Now, if we see that in Revelation chapter 13, that there's going to be the false prophet who's going to hook up with the Antichrist, he's going to set up the image of the beast, the Antichrist. And, of course, we know that the false prophet, just like John the Baptist called the way for Jesus, and since Satan mimics everything that Jesus did, he'll have his uh, forerunner or the false prophet that will come before the Antichrist comes. 
And this is where it comes really, really important to understand the, the, what the Lord is showing us about the purple, the scarlet, the gold, the precious stones, the pearls, because and the city with the seven hills, all of which are found in the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope. So you'll have to see, I believe, there's no doubt in my mind that the Pope has to get involved in these Middle East peace talks. And as you can see from the news of April 30th, not that far ago, that that's exactly what has happened. Now, let me just give you a little bit of the information here. It says the Vatican City, the Rutgers, Pope Francis urged the Israelis and the Palestinians to resume talks and make con uh, courageous decisions to bring peace after his first meeting with Israel's uh, President Shimon Peres on Thursday and accepted an invitation to visit the Holy Land. The two discussed the civil war in Syria, tensions in Iran, and this, the uh, scourge of the anti-Semitism during half an hour of the private talks in the Vatican uh, apologetic place, or palace, excuse me. So this is just information to show you that they are getting together, they're uh, maneuvering around, tr getting ready to do these, at least make the attempt to get involved in these peace talks. Now you're going to see how I connect it. For me to make the connection, I need to go to the National Catholic Register, and you'll see this article that, was, uh, that came out 930 of 2011. The Palestinian Christians are hopeful about the statehood. Now, what's important in this particular article, you'll see here, that the Vatican, one of the lead men in the Catholic Church, look at this, it says Archbishop Dominique Merberti, the Vatican's number two State Department official called September 27th for a two-day, or I'm sorry, a two-state solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and remarks delivered in New York, and according to the, uh, the Catholic News Agency. He insisted that if we want peace, courageous decisions have to be made. Archbishop uh, Meberti, whose official title is the Secretary for Relations with States, encouraged the realization of the right of the Palestinians to have their own independent and sovereign state, and the right of the Israelis to guarantee their security. So, calling for what? Peace and security. What are they talking about? They're talking about peace. Now, if you notice here, you have the Vatican... This is one of the highest guys in the Vatican that are trying to divide up the land of Israel. And anyone who has read the scriptures should understand and believe what the Lord said about God is going to destroy anybody who tries to do this, to divide up the land of Israel. So you have a religious body that has the, the gold, they have wealth, like we see in the book of Revelation, the city with the seven hills, the purple and the scarlet, as we see in the book of Revelation, pointing to the Vatican. And the Vatican is trying to divide up the nation of Israel. Let me tell you something right now. Either the Vatican is unaware of these scriptures and void of knowledge, which is hard to believe, or they simply have nothing to do with the real Jesus Christ, and they're, they're following what we see Christ warning about, that they are coming against the nation of Israel. This is the beginning of the false church, because when you read these other articles about the Pope and what they're doing, they want to make a world religion in Rome. And I have this information in my book. And not only that, but when you look at my different posts and in my book, you'll see that the Pope is called for a one world leader and some one person to control the entire banking system. 
So you have Revelation chapter 13 and you have Revelation chapter 17 coming into fruition. You have the call for peace and safety. Trying to divide up the land of Israel. Connecting Joel chapter 3 verse 2, Zechariah chapter 12. It's all together. Now let me move on here. Now let, let me just confirm this for you. Because this is the new Pope. And I want you to see, you remember what I told you about the colors from the book of Revelation, chapter 17. The purple and the scarlet. Well, here you have, let me take a look here. You have the purple and you have the scarlet. You have the Pope who sits on his throne in Rome. And he's definitely doing the exact opposite of what the Lord Jesus we see and in the Old Testament seeing what they should be doing to Israel is supporting Israel and not trying to separate or divide the people but here you have the leader of the one of the biggest churches in the world wearing the identical colors that Jesus warns about the purple and the scarlet doing the exact opposite of what Jesus wants for the nation of Israel why is this I have no doubt in my mind we are in the end times and the Roman Catholic Church who is not following God's will will be playing a major role antagonistic against the real church in the last days. So as you could see, Revelation chapter 3 and 4, when you look at it now, I'm praying to my Father in heaven that when you look at it, it becomes crystal clear to you what's happening and how it's all converging in the same generation. The generation who saw the rebirth of Israel, the generation who was seeing the, the church trying to form this one world religion and trying to form a one world government banking system. The Pope pushing for this. The identical colors, the gold and the silver. And I didn't even talk about the, the stones and the pearls and if you do a search you'll find out that the Pope's tiara that they that he wears full of stones and pearls gold identical John 14 6 says this these are the words this is what our Lord Jesus Christ says and Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me. Knowing what is happening out there and what I'm giving to you today is just a fraction, tiny, tiny fraction of what we see in the news connecting, showing us God's word is coming to pass. Showing us that what Jesus warned about these last days are already here and we're in the midst of the birth, birth pangs and they're going to get worse. We need to give our lives over to the Lord. He's calling you today. And you may be offended thinking that Jesus is the only way, but let me assure you that it's out of the Lord's compassion that you're listening to this news today, being able to connect, showing you how God is showing you his word, showing you that the words are coming into fruition in one single generation. All of the prophecies that the Lord said were going to happen in the last days are here now. We're seeing them all. And there's only a few left to be fulfilled. And so, today, consider accepting the Lord's invitation to you that He is the life, He is the truth, and He is the only way to the Father. In closing, I want to read a portion of Matthew chapter 24 in verses 32. I'm going to start at 32. And he says this, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know the summer is nigh. And so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Now verily I say unto you, 
This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. You have it right there. You have it in a nutshell. The Lord told us exactly what generation would see all these things. Now, you have a choice today. You can believe what he says. Or you can reject it. But if you reject it, there will be no place for you in heaven. And Christ makes that very, very clear. You cannot go to the Father unless it is through Christ. Consider the message that you're hearing today. God bless.